Welcome back to another episode of the Reckless French Garage. On this episode, I invade Howard's shop, take over his lift, eat his tacos, and uh, pull out the 373 gears from the tow Suburban and install some Yukon 411s. This should be fun. This is a Reckless Wrench Garage version of a how-to. In the event you or someone you know are planning to rebuild or re-gear an axle like this, this video might just be able to help you on your quest. This video does not replace factory service manual, so use your best judgment when deciding to follow this video. First things first, we need to get the vehicle up in the air. Remove the spare tire to gain more access to the rear end. Remove the rear wheels, remove the drive shaft, and drain the rear axle. Remove all the diff cover bolts and smack the cover with a hammer to knock it loose or use a pry bar to peel it off. Next you'll need to remove the rear brake calipers. Due to the limited space between the leaf springs and the brake, it's easier to remove the brake caliper mounting bracket and the caliper together. Once removed, secure the caliper up out of the way. Remove the rotors by taking these stupid little clips off and sliding them off. Now back to the differential. Rotate the carrier until you can access the center pin retaining bolt. Loosen the bolt, rotate the carrier to a position where you can remove the center pin from the carrier and access the C-clips. You will not be able to remove the retaining bolt at this time, so just slide it out enough to remove the center pin, then put it back into place. Slide the axles in towards the carrier slightly to see the C-clips. Using a magnet or your preferred tool, remove the C-clips and pull the axles out. They do not need to be pulled out completely, only far enough to clear the carrier. Remove the side adjuster retainer. Now you can loosen the carrier caps and slightly loosen the adjuster on the right side. Remove the caps, keeping a hand on the carrier so you don't drop it on your foot. That wouldn't feel good. Then remove the carrier from the housing. Remove the pinion yoke by using a puller. Then remove the pinion with a few good blows from a heavy mallet. If you're planning to reuse the gears for something, place a large deep well socket over the end to prevent damage to the threads. Now that you have the carrier assembly out of the vehicle, it's time to remove the ring gear. The ring gear bolts on the GM 9.5 inch are reverse thread. Be sure to ratty loosey and lefty tidy, or you'll be here for a while. The ring gear is a tight fit on the carrier. To remove the ring gear, once the bolts are out, hit around the edge of the gear with a mallet as you see here. If you plan to reuse the gear for anything, do not do this over any surface that can damage the gears. Now we're ready to install the new gears. Because the ring gear is such a tight fit over the carrier, you will need to apply heat to the gear or cold to the carrier. In this case, we place the ring gear in front of the heater, because science, and heat makes things expand. While that gets nice and toasty, we thought it'd be a good time to remove the old bearing races from the differential and install the new ones. We used a steel punch to knock out the old ones, flip them around and use them as a tool to install the new races. Placing the ring gear on the carrier can be done multiple ways. We chose to drop the carrier into the ring gear to make it easier to line up the holes and install the bolts. Install four bolts opposite of each other to fully seat the ring gear to the carrier and keep it from moving. Apply thread lock to all the bolts and torque them to 75 foot-pounds. Remember, they are reverse thread. Now remove the old carrier bearings using your preferred method. We use the Yukon Gear and Axle Bearing Remover Kit because it's awesome and saves us a lot of time.
Grab your overhaul kit and liberate the new bearings from the packaging. Take the carrier over to the press and place the new bearings in their home. Once all the necessary bearings are installed, grab your pinion and slide it into place. Install the new crush sleeve and outer pinion bearing from the front side. Install the pinion yoke and nut, and spend the next 20 minutes painfully setting the pinion bearing preload. You are looking for 15 to 22 inch pounds using new bearings, or 7 to 9 inch pounds if you're using used bearings. Install the carrier assembly and torque the bearing caps to 80 foot pounds. Now grab your paintbrush, channel your inner Bob Ross, and apply some gear marking compound to the ring gear, covering about five happy little teeth on both sides. Rotate the carrier assembly while applying a bit of drag. You can slide the axles in place and have a friend hold one side while rotating the pinion. Make any adjustments at the carrier by using shims on the left side and the adjuster on the right side. Adjustments to the pinion depth are done by adding or removing shims between the pinion gear and the inner bearing. Once you have a happy pattern, check your backlash. You're looking for six to ten thousandths. Once the gear setup is complete, push both axles in, install the C-clips, pull the axles out until they stop, reinstall the center pin and the retaining bolt, Remove all the gasket material, clean out the differential housing, and install the new diff cover using RTV or a gasket, and fill her on up. Alright, well, here's a quick plug for Howard. I'd just like to say thank you for letting me take over your shop. Thank you all for continuing to watch our channel. Provided Howard did everything correctly on this and didn't screw anything up, we might be able to go get some tacos after this. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, put it down below. You know the deal. And until next time, stay reckless. So remember that time I said if Howard didn't screw anything up, we'd go get tacos? Well, we can't go get tacos if we didn't put the C-clips on the axles.